Is paying your taxes a personal issue? Sure. Um, the amount of tax you pay, I pay, a cabinet minister pays, that, that's personal. But there comes a point where it becomes a question of how honest you are and the question of a minister, whether it's compatible with the ministerial code. OK. Uh, now, in the last half hour or so, Nadim Zahavi has released a statement. Have you had a chance to have a look at it? I have. One bit of it particularly interests me. Go on, tell us about it. So he says, HMRC concluded... Sorry, a million people calling me... But they concluded <laughs> that me not paying the right amount of tax was careless and not deliberate. Well, if it had been deliberate, that is criminal tax evasion. So to say, as if it's some kind of plaudit, they concluded it wasn't deliberate, doesn't give us a huge amount of comfort. He's also suggesting in his statement, this was some very difficult technical point. No, no, if you get a 30% penalty for being careless, that means that you failed to pay tax when it was due and that you don't have reasonable grounds for the mistake. So he received, it looks like he will have received about 27 million quid and he didn't pay tax on it. And he wants us now to think this is just some minor thing. And when I reported back in July that I thought this had happened, his response was to deny everything, to send lawyers to threaten to sue me, and to repeatedly put out statements that his tax affairs were in order. At the same time as he was doing that, he was sending accountants to go and negotiate with HMRC and make it all go away quietly. But that is not something that I think anyone who has ethical standards, let alone a cabinet minister, should be doing. Dan, were there any answers to the questions that you've been posing all along since last July in this latest statement, which was released by Mr Zahawi today, as um, he says he wants to address some of the confusion about my finances? You seem to be confused, Dan. Are you less confused now? Uh, no, nope, I'm, well, I don't think I've ever been confused. Right. It's, clear to, it's clear to me that if you found a company but take no shares in it at all, and a Gibraltar company owned by a trust owned by your dad takes all the shares you would have get, got, it's clear to me that that's an attempt at tax avoidance. If then you say you're not the beneficiary of a trust, you've never benefited from the structure, when there is clear evidence you once received £99,000 from that structure, I'm not confused. I, I know that what you're saying it, it does not align with the facts. So the confusion, I think, is confusion that he's been trying to create with this wall of denials and obfuscation. Could there be a, a more innocent explanation? Because in the statement, as you've just pointed out, this uh, company's Balshaw Investments, hmm. he goes on to say, HMRC agreed with my accountants that I have never set up an offshore structure, including Balshaw Investments, and that I am not the beneficiary of Balshaw Investments. How can he make that statement if, as you say, there's £99,000, there is evidence of that going from Balshaw to Mr Zahawi. Could there be another explanation, a simpler explanation, an innocent mistake? Well, if my dad sets up an offshore structure and I then use that structure to avoid tax, I guess I can tell you I didn't establish the structure. So, so what? What his is, what is statement misses out is the chronology here. The chronology is, I say he has 3.7 million tax that, that, that he hasn't paid. It's only after that that he sends accountants to go and talk to HMRC. He, he didn't do this out of the goodness of his heart. He did it because he, he knew that it was out there. And then he tried to, whilst negotiating it, he tried to keep that hidden from the public, denied that Denison was wrong. And even in the last week, when it's been crystal clear that this is what's happened, um, he's been putting out statements that his taxes have always been in order. Well, if they're in order, you wouldn't have just had to pay 3.7 million plus a 30% penalty. Dan, what prompted you to look into Mr Zahawi's affairs? Because you started back in July, and as you've said so yourself in the many Twitter threads that you've put out, and you've written about this, the story seemed to sort of go nowhere. Nobody really picked up on it. Uh, it was out there. You put it out there. Yeah. But, but nothing really happened. So firstly, what prompted you to look into the story in the first place? So there was that... Curious story in a lot of the papers that there'd been a red flag raised when he was appointed as a cabinet minister after some kind of investigation by the NCA, um, the SFO and HMRC. And he denied that. But how would he know if they'd been investigating him? And that started me looking. But actually, um, I'm pretty confident what I found, YouGov, is not something the SFO and NCA would ever have been interested in. It's too small beer for them. So I think there is still something else out there which I haven't found. 
which is what they were looking at. Sorry, that was your first question. Um, second question, why did it go quiet? I think that was easy. So you had me, tax nerd, nobody's heard of, saying I think tax is owed. You've got Sahawi sending lawyer letters out threatening people. You've got him issuing fairly clear denials that his tax is all paid. I think that's a very hard story to report. And it would have continued to be unreported were it not for an amazing piece of reporting by The Sun on Sunday where they had the details of the settlement. They reported the settlement. Yeah, when journalism awards are handed out, I bet they won't give them to the Sun, but, but my golly, they should. Do you think that there was also possibly a matter uh, which you've been very open about? You're a Labour Party member. Do you think that may have played into the fact that the story wasn't picked up as quickly or perhaps immediately because people thought, well, maybe perhaps that is somebody who's trying to score political points? Yeah, I don't think so, because anyone who reads my stuff, including the journalists who read my stuff, know that I've always been nonpartisan in my tax analysis. Yeah. In 2019, I, I, I was extremely critical of the Labour Party's tax policies at the time. Labour front bench was busy briefing journalists. I was the Tory party's favourite lawyer. 